the church, the church birth and creation. The book of Acts is the pivotal for understanding the early church, serving as historical and theological foundation. It divides its narrative into three significant waves of witness, as outlined in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This session focuses on the first part, observing the Apostles' transformation from spending time with the risen Lord before His ascension, to becoming bold witnesses of the resurrection at the Pentecost through the power of the Holy Spirit. This transformation is a testament to the divine power working within them, equipping them to fulfill their mission. Witnessing in Jerusalem, Acts chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 8 verse 4. The early Christian community in Jerusalem. Luke portrays the early Christian community in Jerusalem as a journey of faith, with Jesus' mission counting through his disciples. This period captures the apostles' initial efforts to witness the resurrection within Jerusalem. The community's life was characterized by a strong sense of fellowship shared resources, and communal prayer. The believers gathered regularly, devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. This communal life fostered a sense of unity and purpose among the believers. They sought to live out the teachings of Jesus in their daily lives. Transformation by the Holy Spirit The transformation of the apostles by the Holy Spirit is a central theme in Acts. After Jesus' ascension, the apostles were instructed to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. This promise was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended upon them with power. The Greek term dunamis, translated as power, signifies a dynamic force that emboldened the apostles to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah fearlessly. This empowerment mark a significant shift from their previous state of fear and uncertainty. Peter, who had previously denied Jesus, now stood boldly before a crowd, proclaiming the gospel and calling the people to repentance. Acts 2 verses 14 to 41. The Holy Spirit indwelling presence transformed their fear into courage, enabling them to witness based on their relationship with the risen Christ rather than their knowledge alone. Ascension and the Promise of the Holy Spirit Before his ascension, Jesus appeared to his apostles over 40 days, teaching them the kingdom of God. This period, known as mystagogy, allowed the apostles to fully grasp the mysteries of their faith and prepare for their mission as witnesses. Jesus' appearances during this time were crucial for reaffirming his resurrection and instructing the apostles on the significance of the events they had witnessed. He emphasized the continuity of God's plan, explaining how his life, death, and resurrection fulfilled the scripture. The ascension itself 
was a profound event as the apostle watched Jesus being taken up into heaven. This event signified the completion of Jesus' earthly ministry and the beginning of the apostle's mission to carry on his work. Jesus promised them that they would receive the power when the Holy Spirit came upon them and that they would be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 This promise gave the apostles the assurance and motivation they needed to carry their mission with confidence and determination. Witnessing in Judea and Samaria, Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to chapter 15 verse 35. Expansion of the Witness The witness of the apostles began to expand beyond Jerusalem, reaching the regions of Judea and Samaria. This expansion was marked by missionary activities of Stephen, Philip, and Peter. Their efforts demonstrated the inclusive nature of the gospel, breaking down barriers and extending the message of salvation to a broader audience. Stephen's powerful preaching and subsequent martyrdom were pivotal moments in this expansion. His speech before the Sanhedrin recounted the history of Israel and emphasized the fulfillment of God's promises through Jesus. Stephen's martyrdom witnessed and approved by Saul, later Paul, highlighted the cost of discipleship and the courage required to be a witness for Christ. The Martyrdom of Stephen Stephen's martyrdom is a significant event in the early church, illustrating the cost of being witness for Christ. As one of the seven deacons chosen to serve the early Christian community, Stephen was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. His powerful preaching and miraculous signs drew the attention of the religious authorities, leading to his arrest and the trial before the Sanhedrin. In his defense, Stephen delivered a compelling speech, recounting the history, accused the religious leaders of resisting the Holy Spirit and betraying and murdering the righteous one, Jesus. Enraged by his word, the, the crown stoned Stephen to death. As he was being stoned, Stephen prayed for his persecutors, saying, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Acts chapter 7 verse 6. His death marked the first martyrdom in the early church and set a powerful example of forgiveness and unwavering faith. Philip's Evangelistic Efforts Philip, another of seven deacons, played a crucial role in the early expansion into Judea and Samaria. His evangelistic efforts are highlighted by his encounter with the Utopian Union, a high-ranking official in the Utopian court. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Philip approached the Union and was reading from the book of Isaiah. Philip explained the passage revealing how it pointed to Jesus as the suffering servant who died for the sins of humanity. Moved by Philip's explanation, the eunuch requested to be baptized. Philip baptized him on the spot, and the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. Acts chapter 8 verse 26 to 39. This encounter demonstrated 
the inclusivity of the gospel message and the foreshadow of church mission to the Gentiles. Witnessing to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 15 verse 36 to chapter 28 verse 31. Paul's missionary journeys. Paul's missionary journeys are the central focus of Acts, highlighting his tireless efforts to spread the gospel throughout the Greco Roman world. Paul's conversion to the road to Damascus was a turning point in his life. From a zealous persecutor of Christians, he became one of the most influential apostles, dedicating his life proclaiming the gospel. Paul undertook multiple missionary journeys, traveling extensively and establishing churches in various cities. His journey were marked both successes and challenges, including opposition, persecution, and imprisonment. Despite of these difficulties, Paul remained steadfast in his mission, driven by his conviction that Jesus was the Messiah and the salvation was available to all who believe. His letter to the early churches provide valuable insight into the theology and practice of early church, addressing issues of doctrines and ethics and community life. Paul's trials and witness in Rome. Paul's journey to Rome is a significant part in his mission, symbolizing the church engagement with the broader world. After being arrested in Jerusalem and facing multiple trials, Paul appeared to Caesar and was sent to Rome. His journey to Rome was fought with danger, including a shipwreck, but he remained resolute in his mission. Upon arrival in Rome, Paul continued to preach the gospel even under house arrest. He met with Jewish leaders and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with boldness and without hindrance. Acts chapter 28 verse 30 to 31. Paul's witness in Rome underscored the church call to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth, regardless the challenges. Incorporating the Gentiles The inclusion of Gentiles into the church was a transformative development, fulfilling the promises made to Abraham. Paul's ministry was instrumental in breaking down the barrier between Jews and Gentiles, emphasizing that salvation was available to all true faith in Jesus Christ. The council at Jerusalem, as recorded in Acts chapter 15, was a pivotal moment in affirming the inclusion of the Gentiles. The apostles and the elders gathered to address the question whether the Gentile convert needed to follow Jewish law. Guided by the Holy Spirit, they concluded that Gentiles were not required to observe the law of Moses, but were to abstain from certain practices. That they were particularly offensive to Jewish believers. This decision marked a significant step in the church mission, affirming the universality of the gospel and the unity of the believers in Christ. 
The Power of Witness, Luke chapter 24, verses 48 to 49. Witnesses through the Spirit. The disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses of Christ. This empowerment was not based on their knowledge or abilities on their transformed lives and relationship with the risen Christ. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit was fulfilled at Pentecost when the disciples were filled with the Spirit and began to speak in different languages, enabling them to communicate the gospel to people from various nations. This event demonstrated the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, enabling the disciples to fulfill their mission with boldness and conviction. The Great Commission Jesus commissioned His disciples, As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. John chapter 20 verse 21 Great Commission is not just a mandate, but an invitation to participate in the life and mission of Jesus. The Church, through this commissioning, relieved the life of Christ, embodying His redeeming action in both word and deed. The disciples were called to go into the world, make disciples of all nations, Baptize them and teach them to obey everything Jesus had commanded. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20. This mission extends to all believers, challenging us to live out our faith and share the gospel with others. Promises fulfilled at Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Pentecost and the Holy Spirit Pentecost celebrated 50 days after Passover marks the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles. Witnessing in Judea and Samaria Acts chapter 8 verse 5 to chapter 15 verse 35 Expansion of the Witness the early church mission extended beyond Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria, marking the beginning of its outreach to a broader audience. This expansion is vividly captured in the missionary activities of key figures like Stephen, Philip, and Peter. Their actions illustrated the church commitment to spreading the message of Jesus to new regions and people, breaking through geographical and cultural barriers. The spread of the gospel to Judea and Samaria was fulfillment of Jesus' command in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 where he instructed his disciples to be his witnesses not only in Jerusalem but also in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This expansion was not a geographical move but also a theological and cultural one as it began to encompass diverse groups of people. Stephen's ministry was characterized by his powerful preaching and miraculous signs, which drew many to the faith. His actions and words challenged the established religious authorities and set the stage for a broader understanding of the gospel's witch. Philip, on the other hand, engaged directly to those outside Jewish community, exemplifying the inclusive nature of the gospel message. Peter's involvement in this missionary work demonstrated the 
church growing understanding in its universal mission. His interactions with non-Jews and his willingness to embrace them into the Christian community were significant steps in early Christian development. The Martyrdom of Stephen Stephen Martyrdom stands as a pivotal moment in the early church, showcasing the cause of discipleship and the unwavering commitment required to be a witness of Christ. Stephen, one of the seven deacons chosen to serve the early Christian community, was known for his faith, wisdom, and the power of the Holy Spirit. His ministry was marked by powerful preaching and miraculous signs that attracted many to the faith. Stephen's speech before the Sanhedrin is a profound recounting of the history of Israel, emphasizing the continuity of God's plan and the fulfillment of His promises through Jesus Christ. He boldly accused the religious leaders of resisting the Holy Spirit and betraying and murdering the Righteous One, Jesus. This speech not only highlighted the persistent rebellion of Israel, but also underscored the new covenant established through Jesus Christ. The enraged response of the Sanhedrin led to Stephen's stoning, marking him the first Christian martyr. As he was being stoned, Stephen looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. His final words were a prayer of forgiveness for his persecutors, mirroring Jesus' own words on the cross. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Acts chapter 7 verse 60. Stephen's death had a profound impact in the early church. It scattered the believer, pushing them out of Jerusalem and into Judea and Samaria, thus accelerating the spread of the gospel. Saul, later Paul, witnessed and approved of Stephen's execution, an event that significantly influenced his subsequent dramatic conversion and mission to spread the gospel. Philip's evangelistic efforts. Philip's, another of seven deacons, played a crucial role in the early church expansion into Judea and Samaria. His evangelistic efforts are particularly highlighted by his encounter with the utopian eunuch a significant event that demonstrated the inclusivity of the gospel message. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Philip met the utopian eunuch on the road from Jerusalem to Gaza. The eunuch, a high-ranking official into the utopian court, was reading from the book of Isaiah. Philip approached him, and upon being invited into the chariot, explained how the passage pointed to Jesus as the suffering servant who died for the sins of humanity. The eunuch, moved by Philip's explanation, expressed his desire to be baptized. Finding a body of water, Philip baptized him, and the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 29. This encounter was significant as it prefigured the acceptance of the Gentiles into the Christian community. 
underscored the universal nature of the gospel. Philip's ministry in Samaria was also marked by the signs and wonders. He preached the gospel, performed miracles, and many people were healed and delivered from the unclean spirits. The impact of his ministry led to great joy in the city, demonstrating the transformative power of the gospel. His success in Samaria prompted Peter and John to visit and lay hands on the new believers who then received the Holy Spirit, further validating the inclusion of Samaritans in the Christian community. Peter's role in Judea and Samaria Peter's involvement in the mission of Judea and Samaria highlights the evolving understanding of the church mission and its growing inclusivity. His journey to these regions marked by significant events that underscore the universal reach of the gospel. One notable event is Peter's encounter with Simon the Magician in Samaria. Simon, who had previously practiced sorcery, was amazed by the signs and miracles performed by Philip and became a believer. However, when he saw that the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on the apostles' hand, he offered money to receive his power. Peter rebuked him sternly emphasizing that the gift of God could not be bought and calling Simon to repentance. Acts chapter 8 verses 9 to 24. This incident highlighted the importance of genuine faith and the integrity of the apostles' ministry. Another significant event was Peter's vision in Joppa where he saw a sheep lowered from heaven with various unclean animals. A voice told him to kill and eat, but Peter, adhering to Jewish dietary laws, refused. The voice responded, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Acts chapter 10 verse 15 this vision prepared Peter for his subsequent encounter with Cornelius, a Roman centurion. Peter's acceptance of Cornelius and his household in the Christian community after they had received the Holy Spirit marked a turning point in the church understanding of Gentile inclusion. This event underscored the breaking down of barriers and the universal call of the gospel. The impact of soul's conversion. Soul's conversion is one of the most dramatic and transformative events in the New Testament. Initially, a zealous persecutor of Christians, Saul encountered the risen Christ on the road to Damascus. This encounter left him behind and profoundly changed. Ananias, a disciple in Damascus, was instructed by the Lord to go to Saul, lay hand on him, and restore his sight. Saul, now Paul, was baptized and filled by the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 19. Paul's conversion had a significant impact in the early church. He immediately began preaching that Jesus is the Son of God, confounding the Jews who knew him as a fierce opponent of Christian faith. His dramatic transformation from persecutor to preacher served as a powerful testimony to the truth of the gospel 
and the transformative power of encountering Christ. Paul's missionary zeal and intellectual prowess made him a formidable advocate for the gospel. He embarked on a multiple missionary journeys, establishing churches and writing that formed a substantial portion of the New Testament. His theology, particularly his understanding of the inclusion of Gentiles, shaped the early church mission and continues to influence Christian thought and practice. Conclusion The Universal Mission of the Church The expansion of the early church into Judea and Samaria marks a significant pace in its development, emphasizing the universal nature of the gospel. The missionary activities of Stephen, Philip, and Peter illustrate the church commitment to spreading the message of Jesus Christ to all people, breaking down cultural and geographical barriers. Stephen's martyrdom, Philip's evangelistic efforts, and Peter's acceptance of the Gentiles highlight the inclusivity of the gospel and the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. These events set the stage for the broader mission to the Gentiles. Spearhead by Paul, whose conversion and missionary work significantly impacted the spread of Christianity. The early church mission to Judea and Samaria served as a powerful reminder of the church call to witness to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to all people. The mission continues today, challenging believers to carry forward the message of hope, salvation, and transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. Witnessing to the ends of the earth, Acts chapter 15 verse 36 to chapter 28 verse 31. Paul's Missionary Journeys Paul's missionary journeys are among the significant aspects of the book of Acts, chronicling his tireless efforts to spread the gospel throughout the Greco-Roman world. These journeys highlight Paul's dedication, his strategic approach he employed to fulfill the church mandate and to reach the ends of the earth. First Missionary Journey Paul's first missionary journey, accompanied by Barnabas, began in Antioch and covered the regions such as Cyprus, Pisidia, Pompilia, and Lycaonia. This journey, detailed in Acts chapter 13 and 14, marked the start of Paul's systematic evangelization. In Cyprus, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues, encountering opposition from Jews sorcerer named Linus. However, the proconsul Sergius Paulus believed after witnessing Paul's miracle of striking Elimus with blindness. This event underscored the power of God's word and the authority given to Paul and Barnabas as his messengers. Their journey continued to Pisidian Antioch, where Paul delivered a powerful sermon in the synagogue recounting Israel's history and pointing to Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promises. Despite of initial receptiveness, Jewish leaders incited 
persecution against them, leading to their expulsion from the region. Undeterred, Paul and Barnabas moved to Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe, where they faced both acceptance and violent opposition. Lystra, Paul healed a lame man, which led to the crowd mistaking them for gods. However, Jews from Antioch and Iconium turned the crowd against them, resulting in Paul being stoned and left for them. Miraculously, he survived and continued preaching, demonstrating his resilience and unwavering commitments to the gospel. Second Missionary Journey Paul's second missionary journey with Silas as his primary companion began after Jerusalem Council's decision affirming Gentile inclusion without the necessity of adhering the Jewish law. This journey detailed in Acts chapter 15 verse 36 to chapter 18 verse 22, expanding the church reach into Europe. They revisited churches established during the first journey and ventured into the new territories including Macedonia and Achaia. In Philippi, they encountered Lydia, a seller of a purple goods, who became the first European convert. Paul and Silas were later imprisoned for casting out the spirit of a slave girl, leading to their miraculous release through an earthquake. This event resulted in the conversion of the jailers and his household, exemplifying how God's power worked through Paul's trial to spread the gospel. Their journey continued to Thessalonica, Berea, Athens, and Corinth. In Thessalonica, their message caused a uproar among Jews who opposed the idea of Jesus as the Messiah. However, in Berea, the Jews were more receptive, examining the scripture daily to verify Paul's teachings. In Athens, Paul delivered the famous sermon at Areopagus engaging the Greek philosopher presenting the gospel in the culturally relevant manner. Despite mixed reactions, some believed demonstrating the universal appeal of the gospel. In Corinth, Paul faced a significant opposition but received encouragement through a vision from God, leading to an extended and fruitful ministry there. Third Missionary Journey Paul's third missionary journey, detailed in Acts chapter 18, verse 23 to chapter 21, verse 17, focused on strengthening existing churches and further expanding to the reach of the gospel. He spent considerable time in Ephesus, where his ministry had profound impact in the city and surrounding region. In Ephesus, Paul preaching led to a significant number of conversions, and many people renounced their involvement in magic and idolatry. This caused economic repercussion, particularly for those profiting from the sale of silver shrines of Artemis, leading to a riot instigated by Demetrius, a silversmith. Paul's journey continued through Macedonia and Greece, where he revisited and encouraged the churches, 
and throw us? He raised Eutychus from the dead after the young man fell from the window during false extended sermon. This miracle reaffirmed the divine authority and power accompanying Paul's ministry. On his way back to Jerusalem, Paul met with the efficient elders in Miletus, delivering an emotional farewell address. He warned them of future challenges and emphasized the importance of vigilance and pastoral care. Paul's deep concern for the well-being and spiritual health of the churches he established is evident in this address. Reflecting his pastoral heart and dedication to the mission, Paul's trial and witness in Rome. Paul's journey to Rome, documented in Acts chapter 21 verse 17 to chapter 28 verse 31, symbolizes the church engagement with the broader world and its challenges. Despite facing numerous trials, Paul remained steadfast in his mission, exemplifying the resilience and dedication required of Christ's witnesses. Arrests and Trials in Jerusalem Upon returning to Jerusalem, Paul was arrested in the temple after being falsely accused of bringing Gentiles into the sacred area. This led to a violent uproar. Paul was taken into the custody of Roman soldiers. During his defense before the crowd, he recounted his conversion experience, emphasizing his divine commission to preach to the Gentiles. Despite this eloquent defense, the crowd rejected his message prompting the Roman commander to take him into the barracks for his safety. Paul faced several trials, including before the Sanhedrin, where his declaration of the resurrection caused a division between Pharisees and Sadducees. His Roman citizenship protected him from flogging and led to his transfer to Caesarea, where he appeared before Governor Felix. During his two-year imprisonment in Caesarea, Paul had opportunity to present his case to Felix, who was intrigued but ultimately left Paul in prison, hoping for a bribe. Appeal to Caesar and journey to Rome. Paul's appeal to Caesar granted him the right to be tried in Rome. His journey to Rome was fraught with difficulties, including a shipwreck on the island of Malta. Despite the perilous journey, Paul continued to demonstrate unwavering faith and leadership, performing miracles and preaching the gospel. On Malta, he survived the viper bite, and healed the father of Publius, the island chief official, leading to many conversions among the islanders. Upon arriving in Rome, Paul was placed under the house arrest, but continued his ministry with remarkable resilience. He met with Jewish leaders, explaining his situation and the message of the gospel. Paul's ability to continue preaching and teaching despite his confinement highlighted the indomitable spirit of early Christian witness. Witness in Rome Paul's witness in Rome represents the culmination of his missionary effort and the fulfillment of church mission 
to reach the ends of the earth. Under house arrest, Paul welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about Lord Jesus Christ with boldness and without hindrance. Acts chapter 28 verses 30 to 31. The, his letters from this period, known as the prison epistles, include Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. These letters provide deep theological insights and practical guidance for the early Christian communities. Paul's unwavering commitment to his mission, despite facing imprisonment and impending trial, served as a powerful example of dedication and faith. His ability to adapt to his circumstances and continue spreading the gospel underline the resilience required of Christ's witnesses. Incorporating the Gentiles The inclusion of the Gentiles into the church was a transformative development, fulfilling the promises made to Abraham and highlighting the universal nature of the gospel. Paul's ministry played a crucial role in bridging the division between Jews and Gentile, emphasizing that salvation was available to all through faith in Jesus Christ. Theological Foundation Paul's theological foundation for including Gentile is articulated in his letters, particularly Galatians Chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, where he explains that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. This act of redemption allowed the blessing given to Abraham to come to the Gentiles, so that through faith they might receive the promise of the Spirit. Paul's theology emphasized that the promises made to Abraham were fulfilled in Christ and extended to all nations, making no distinction between Jews and Gentile. The Council at Jerusalem The Council at Jerusalem was recorded in Acts chapter 15 was a pivotal moment in affirming the inclusion of Gentiles. The apostles and the elders gathered to address the question of whether Gentile converts needed to follow Jewish law, particularly circumcision. After much debate, Peter stood up and affirmed that God had made no distinction between Jews and Gentiles, giving the Holy Spirit to both. James, the leader of Jerusalem Church, concluded Gentiles should not be burdened with the yoke of the law, but should abstain from practices particularly offensive to Jewish believers. This decision marked a significant step in the church mission affirming the universality of the gospel and the unity of the believers in Christ. Paul's Missionary Efforts Paul's missionary efforts were instrumental in breaking down the barriers between Jews and Gentiles. His journeys took him to predominantly Gentile regions where he established churches and nurtured communities of faith. In his letter, Paul addressed the challenges of integrating diverse groups, emphasizing the quality of all believers in Christ. He used the metaphor of the body, 
to illustrate the unity and diversity of the church, where each member plays a vital role. Paul's confrontation with Peter in Antioch, as described in Galatians chapter 2, further underscore his commitment to Gentile inclusion. When Peter withdraw from eating with Gentiles out of fear of criticism from Jewish Christians, Paul publicly rebuked him, emphasizing that their conduct was not in line with the truth of the gospel. This incident highlighted the ongoing struggle within the early church to fully embrace the inclusivity of the gospel. Impact on the early church. The inclusion of Gentiles who had profound impact on the early church, leading to a significant growth and expansion. The message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ resonated with people from diverse backgrounds, fulfilling the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. The early church, willingness to embrace cultural diversity and remove barriers to inclusion demonstrated the transformative power of the gospel. The incorporation of the Gentiles also enriched the theological and cultural life of the church. The blending of Jewish and Gentile believers brought together different traditions and perspectives, contributing to a richer understanding of the faith. This diversity required ongoing dialogue and adaptation, but it ultimately strengthened the church witness to the world. Conclusion The Universal Mission of the Church The narrative of Paul's missionary journeys, his trials and witness in Rome, and the inclusion of Gentiles into the church underscore the universal mission of the church. The book of Acts portrays a church that is dynamic, resilient, and inclusive, committed to spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. Paul's journey highlights the strategic and determined efforts to reach the diverse population, overcoming significant challenges and opposition. His trials and unwavering witness in Rome symbolize the church engagement with broader world and its challenges demonstrating the resilience and dedication required of Christ's witnesses. The inclusion of Gentiles fulfills the promises made to Abraham and emphasizes the universal nature of the gospel. Paul's ministry bridged the division between Jews and Gentiles, highlighting the church role in bringing together diverse groups into one body of Christ. The early church mission serves as a powerful reminder of the call to witness to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to all people. This mission continues today, challenging believers to carry forward the message of hope, salvation, and transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Power of Witness Luke chapter 24 verses 48 to 49 Witnesses through the Spirit The concept of being witnesses through the Spirit, a cornerstone of Christian faith and practice. In Luke chapter 24, verses 48 to 49, Jesus addresses his disciple, 
declaring, You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This passage highlights the essential role of the Holy Spirit in empowering the disciples to be effective witness of Christ. The Role of the Holy Spirit The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is not merely about acquiring knowledge or eloquence, but about living a life transformed by the resurrection. The disciples' transformation began with the Pentecost event, where the Holy Spirit descended upon them in the form of tongues of fire. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. This dramatic event marked the beginning of their bold and effective witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Prior to Pentecost, the disciples were often portrayed as a fearful and uncertain. However, the infusion of the Holy Spirit imbued them with courage, conviction, and clarity of purpose. The Holy Spirit acts as the dynamic force that enables the believers to live out the resurrected life. This life is characterized by a profound change in behavior, attitude, and purpose. The disciples' actions post-Pentecost are testament to this transformation. They perform miracles, preach with authority, and face persecution with unwavering faith. Their witness was rooted in their personal experience of the risen Christ and the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. Living as Witnesses Being a witness through the Spirit involves more than just verbal proclamation. It requires a holistic embodiment of the gospel. The disciples were called to tell, live, and become the witnesses of the resurrected life they had received. This holistic witness encompasses their words, actions, and attitudes. The early Christian community exemplified this integrated approach of witnessing. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 Their communal life was living testimony to the transformative power of the gospel. Living as witnesses also means embodying the values and teaching of Jesus in daily life. This includes acts of compassion, justice, forgiveness, and love. The disciples' lives were marked by these qualities, which set them apart and drew other to the faith. Their witness was not just about preaching doctrines, but about living a life that reflected the character and mission of Christ. The Impact of Personal Transformation The personal transformation experienced by the disciples was the foundation of their effective witness. Their encounters with the risen Christ and the infilling of the Holy Spirit radically changed their lives. 
this personal transformation gave authenticity to their message. People were drawn to the disciples not just because of their words, but because of the evident change in their lives. Their boldness, joy, and sacrificial love were compelling testimonies of the truth of the resurrection. In contemporary terms, witnessing through the Spirit means allowing the Holy Spirit to work in and through us, transforming our lives and enabling us to be effective witnesses. This involves daily surrender to the Spirit's living, cultivation, a deep relationship with Christ, and living out the values of the kingdom of God. It is through this ongoing process of transformation that we have become a credible witnesses to the world. Great Commission The Great Commission was recorded in John chapter 20 verse 21 and Matthew 28 verses 19 to 20 underscore the disciples' role in continuing Jesus' mission. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. This commissioning emphasizes the continuity of Jesus' mission and responsibility of the disciples to carry it forward. The Scope of the Great Commission The Great Commission is comprehensive in scope, encompassing the mandate to make disciples of all nations. This involves baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything Jesus commanded. The task of making disciples includes evangelism, baptism, and teaching. It is a holistic mission that addresses both spiritual and practical needs of the people. The commissioning also emphasizes the authority of Jesus. He declares that all authority in heaven and on earth has given to him. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 This authority underpins the disciples' mission, giving them confidence and power to go into all the world. The promise of Jesus' presence, and surely I am with you always, to the very ends of the age provides the assurance and support needing for the daunting task. Relieving the Life of Christ Through the Great Commission, the Church is called to relieve the life of Christ, embodying His redeeming action in both word and deed. Involves proclaiming the good news of salvation, demonstrating the love of Christ through the acts of service, and living in a way that reflect the values of the kingdom of God. The early church, as described in the book of Acts, is a model of this holistic approach to mission. They do not preach the gospel, but also cared for the poor, heal the sick, and build a community that embodied the teaching of Jesus. Relieving the life of Christ also means embracing the cross. Jesus' mission involving suffering, sacrifice, and self-giving love. The disciples were called to follow his footsteps, often facing persecution, and hardship for the sake of the gospel. 
This willingness to suffer for the sake of Christ is a powerful witness to the authenticity of their faith. It demonstrates that their commitment to the mission is not based on the convenience or personal gain, but on a deep conviction of the truth of the gospel. The Church Mission Today The Great Commission remains the guiding mandate for the Church today. The Church is called to be a living witness to the resurrected Christ, carrying forward His mission in a world that desperately needs the message of hope and salvation. This involved engaging with the world in the meaningful ways, addressing social injustices, and meeting the needs of the marginalized and oppressed. The mission of the church today requires adaptability and contextualization. Just as the early disciples adapted their message to different cultural contexts, the contemporary church must also find ways to communicate the gospel effectively in diverse settings. This involves understanding the cultural and social dynamics of the communities we serve and finding relevant ways to present the timeless message of the gospel. The church mission also involved a commitment to unity and collaboration. The task of making disciples of all nations is too great for any single individual or congregation. It requires the collective effort of the global church, working together in unity and partnership. This unity is a powerful witness to the world, demonstrating the reconciling power of the gospel. Empowerment for the Mission the empowerment for the mission comes from the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that empowered the early disciples is available to believers today. The Holy Spirit equips us with spiritual gifts, guide us in our mission, and provide the strength and the courage needed to overcome challenges. The resilience on the Holy Spirit is essential for effective witness and mission. In practical terms, this means cultivating a life of prayer, being attentive to the Spirit's living, and being open to the Spirit's work in and through us. It involves stepping out in faith trusting that the Holy Spirit will provide the words, wisdom, and power needed for the task. The early disciples' resilience on the Holy Spirit is a model for us today, reminding us that the mission is ultimately God's work, and we are co-laborers with Him. The transformative power of the gospel. The Great Commission calls the church to proclaim the transformative power of the gospel. The gospel is not just a message of personal salvation, but a call to holistic transformation. It addresses the spiritual, social, and economic dimension of life. The early church witness involved proclamation and demonstration of the gospel. They preach the good news and live out its implication through acts of love and justice. The transformative power of the gospel is seen in the lives of individuals and communities. It brings healing reconciliation, and restoration. 
It breaks down barriers of race, class, and gender, creating a new community of believers united in Christ. The church mission is to be a beacon of this transformation, a community where the values of the kingdom of God are given out. Conclusion The power of witness, as articulated in Luke chapter 24, verses 48 to 49, and the Great Commission, is the foundational to the church mission. The disciples' empowerment by the Holy Spirit enabled them to live transformed lives and effective witnesses of the resurrection. The Great Commission emphasizes the church role in continuing Jesus' mission embodying his redeeming actions in both word and deeds. The early church example of holistic witness combining proclamation, compassionate action, and community building serves as a model for the church today. The mission is challenging and requires resilience, adaptability, and unity. However, the assurance of Jesus' presence and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit provide the strength and guidance needed for the task. As the church continues to engage with the world, it is called to be a living testimony to the transformative power of the gospel, proclaiming and demonstrating the hope and salvation found in Jesus Christ. This mission is not about spreading a message, but about living a life that reflects reality of the resurrection and the values of the kingdom of God. The promises fulfilled at the Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Pentecost and the Holy Spirit Pentecost, celebrated 50 days after Passover, marks a pivotal event in Christian history. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles. This event, recorded in Acts chapter 2, Parallel giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, symbolizing the fulfillment of God's promises and the establishment of the church. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The festival of Pentecost, also known as the Feast of the Weeks, was one of the major Jewish pilgrim feasts commemorating the end of the grain harvest. However, for Christians, Pentecost took on a new meaning as the day when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles. This event is described vividly in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The dramatic manifestations the sounds of a mighty wind and the appearance of the tongues of fire signifies the powerful and divine nature of this event. The Holy Spirit's arrival was not a quiet or subtle occurrence. It was a public and unmistakable demonstration of God's power. This outpouring fulfilled Jesus' promise that 
the disciples would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 5 And it marked the beginning of the new era in which the Spirit would play a central role in the life of the church. The parallels of giving the Torah The event of Pentecost has deep roots in Jewish tradition. The timing of the Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, parallels the Jewish festival of Shavuot, which commemorates the giving of Torah at Mount Sinai. Just as giving of the Torah marked the establishment of Israel as God's covenant people, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the Pentecost marked the birth of the church as the new covenant of the community. The parallels between these two events are striking. Both events involved the divine revelation accompanied dramatic signs, thunder, lightning, and the sound of a trumpet at Sinai, and the wind and fire at Pentecost. Both events resulted in the formation of a community called to live out God's commandment. At Sinai, God gave the law of Moses, establishing the commandment with Israel. At Pentecost, God gave the Holy Spirit to the apostles, empowering them to proclaim the gospel and establish the church. The giving of the Torah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit both signify the new pace in God's redemptive plan. The Torah provided the moral and the ethical foundation for Israel, guiding them in their relationship with God and with each other. Similarly, the Holy Spirit empowers believers to live out the teaching of Jesus, guiding them in their mission to spread the gospel and to build up the church. The universality of the message. Pentecost also marked the universal nature of the gospel message. This event reversed the confusion of Babel, signified the universal call to salvation. Reversal of Babel In the story of the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11 verses 1 to 9, humanities attempted to build a tower to reach heaven resulted in God confusing their language and scattering them across the earth. This event symbolized the division and the fragmentation of humanity. Pentecost, however, brought a reversal of this division. As the apostles began to speak in other tongues, the diverse crowd in Jerusalem, comprising Jews from every nation and their heavens, was astonished to hear them declaring the wonders of God in their own languages. Acts chapter 2 verses 5 to 12 The miraculous event signifies the breaking down of linguistic and cultural barriers. The gospel message was not confined to one language or one people. It was a message for all nations. The Holy Spirit enabled the apostles to communicate the message of salvation to a diverse audience, demonstrating that God's redemptive plan included all of humanity. The Universal Call to Salvation Peter's sermon at the Pentecost recorded in Acts chapter 2 verses 14 to 41 emphasized the universal Call to salvation, quoting Prophet Joel. Peter declared that the outpouring of the Spirit was a fulfillment of God's promise. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. This proclamation underscores the inclusive nature of the gospel. The invitation to receive the Holy Spirit and be baptized was extended to everyone, regardless of their backgrounds. Peter's sermon culminated in a call to repentance and baptism, promising the gift of the Holy Spirit to all who believed, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 to 39. This message highlighted the accessibility of salvation and the inclusive nature of the Christian community. The response was overwhelming, with about 3,000 people accepting the message and being baptized, marking the rapid growth of the early church. The Early Christian Community's Life The early Christians' response to the events of Pentecost was marked by deep commitment to living out their faith in a communal context. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 provide a concise summary of their way of life. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to prayer. Devotion to the apostles' teaching. The early Christian community was dedicated to learning from the apostles, who were the primarily witnesses of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The apostles' teaching provided the foundation for the community's faith and practice. This teaching was rooted in the Hebrew scriptures and centered on the fulfillment of God's promises through Jesus Christ. The early Christians were eager to understand and apply the teachings of Jesus in their lives, and they look to the apostles for guidance and instruction. Fellowship and Breaking of the Bread Fellowship or koinonia was a defining characteristic of early Christian community. This fellowship was not merely social but was deeply spiritual, reflecting a shared life in Christ. The breaking of bread, which likely included both communal meals and the celebration of Lord's Supper, was center aspect of their fellowship. These meals were a tangible expression of their unity and love for one another. The acts of breaking bread together symbolized their participation in the body of Christ and their commitment to one another. Commitment to prayer. Prayer was another cornerstone of early Christian communities' life. They gathered regularly for prayer, both in temple court or in their homes. These times of prayer were opportunities for worship, thanksgiving, and intercession. The early Christian relied on prayer for guidance, strength, and support in their mission. Prayer was a means of maintaining their connection with God and seeking His will for their lives. Sharing Possessions The early Christians' communal life was characterized by a radical sharing of possession. Acts chapter 2 verses 44 to 45 states, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possession to give to one another who had need. This voluntary sharing was a practical expression of their love and concern for one another. It demonstrated their commitment to living out the teaching of Jesus, who emphasized the importance of caring for the poor and needy. This sharing of possessions was not a mandated requirement, but a voluntary act of generosity. It reflected the early Christians' recognition that their resources were gifts from God to be used for common good. 
This practice also highlighted the transformative power of the Holy Spirit, which enabled them to transcend selfishness and materialism. The transformative power of the Holy Spirit. The life of early Christian community was a powerful testimony to the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. The changes in their behavior, attitudes, and priorities were evidence of the Spirit works in their lives. The early Christians' commitment to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and the prayer demonstrated their deep devotion to God and to one another. The Holy Spirit not only empowered the apostles to preach and to perform miracles, but also transformed the lives of the ordinary believers. This transformation was visible in their communal life their generosity, and their unwavering commitment to the gospel. The early Christian community became a living witness to the reality of the resurrection and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Conclusion The events of Pentecost, as recorded in Acts chapter 2, mark a significant fulfillment of God's promises and the establishment of the church. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit empowered the apostles to be bold witnesses of the gospel, reversing the confusion of Babel and highlighting a universal call to salvation. The early Christian community's life, characterized by devotion to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer, reflected the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost set the stage for the rapid growth of the early church and the spread of the gospel to all nations. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit and a formation of a vibrant, loving community demonstrated the fulfillment of God's promises and the beginning of a new era in His redemptive plan. The early Christians witnessed continues to inspire believers today to live out their faith with devotion, generosity, and a commitment to the mission of the church. Thank you for watching this episode on the early church and the bold beginning of its mission in Jerusalem. We have explored the powerful transformation of the apostles by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and how their witness ignited a movement that would soon spread to all corners of the earth. In the next episode, we'll journey further as we examine the church's expansion into Judea and Samaria. We'll witness the incredible conversion of Saul, later known as Paul, and the significant events that led to the inclusion of Gentiles within the early Christian community. These milestones show us how God's plan unfolded to bring salvation to all people. Be sure to subscribe and join us next time as we uncover the church's growth and its inspiring message of unity and inclusion. Thank you for watching.